What's up everybody, it's Chris with the Music Tech Insider and today we're going to be going over the secrets of the SoundCloud API version 2. So a quick disclaimer, this is for research purposes only. Um, this is not to be used in any sort of commercial application. Um, it does probably violate the SoundCloud terms of service. So please just use this for research purposes. Um, please do not use it in any sort of uh, abusive way to SoundCloud. Um, I love SoundCloud, I love their API. Um, this is really just to share the knowledge that I've gained uh, through discovery on their API. So first, let's go over what's actually in the API that's documented, version one, and what's different in version two. In version one, we can see that there is uh, some information available, but it's really just kind of um, focused around general information around a user's profile, um, track information, but it's very limited track information, um, information on playlists, um, and information on different albums. It's not really that comprehensive and it doesn't really reflect what we see when we visit uh, the actual SoundCloud website. So version two actually adds in a lot of different information that is really useful in kind of the modern music industry landscape. So new features that are available for um, any artist that you wanna check out, you can see the amount of uh, reposters, the amount of people that liked and the amount of people that commented, you can get detailed information about each one of these uh, different attributes. So you can see exactly who reposted, uh, exactly who liked, and exactly who commented. Um, this is obviously really, really useful when we talk about uh, engagement on SoundCloud. And it's really useful to see um, from an analysis perspective, if we wanna see who reposts the most, who comments the most, who likes the most. Um, if we have a list of users that we know repost on every single track, we know that this person is considered maybe like a super fan. And this person is um, very valuable to us, right? And so any um, analysis on an artist um, that can gain us this sort of um, deep insight, um, we can kind of identify who the most um, uh, likely people are to engage with um, a track or an album or a playlist. And that information is super useful. Something we did at Spectral was um, analyze people's followings to identify who the most influential followers were for any SoundCloud account. Um, this was really, I think, one of our most popular tools because it allowed artists to engage with their network in a way that wasn't possible before. Um, you might have 5,000 followers, but there was no way on SoundCloud to determine if those followers were someone, um, just a regular user with a, an account that had maybe five followers, or if they were an established artist that was following you. Um, if you didn't check up on it every single day, um, which is a pretty big ask, I think of a lot of established artists, um, you would maybe miss um, a lot of established people or influential people following you. So what this does is allow us to see exactly who commented, liked, and reposted, and we can see detailed user information about each one of those users. So we can quickly determine programmatically with code uh, without having to go through it by hand, um, are those people influential or not? Um, are they established or not? Uh, are they verified or not? And these are really important metrics, um, I think, for any artist and any label to identify these people within their network that they can um, contact or reach out to and say, hey, I saw that you engaged with my track um, or you have been engaging with my track. Um, do you want to network? Or do you want to collab? You know, these are really important things for an artist uh, in terms of growth uh, and in terms of networking. So um, these are available right now in the, the SoundCloud API V2. Um, we'll be getting into how to get your V2 key a little bit later on. Another feature is the um, ability to see what playlists and albums a track has been added to. Uh, so this is really important and something that's not available in the SoundCloud API version one um, that allows you to see um, how um, many playlists and albums um, a track has been added to. 
And this becomes really important because it's it's kind of similar to the way Spotify works, where um, with Spotify for artists, uh, which I'll be doing another video on shortly, um, you can see on your Spotify for artists dashboard how many playlists your song has been added to. Um, the fact that SoundCloud does not allow you to do this is a little uh, disappointing because uh, the parity between SoundCloud and Spotify grows each and every day, and they are obviously competitors within the same marketplace. What we really um, look at with this metric is uh, the fact that uh, you can really determine how popular a track is as to how much it's being shared. Um, the only really uh, available metric we have right now is, has it been added to another playlist or album? So any user on SoundCloud can create a playlist and add tracks to it, just like Spotify. Um, the ability to track that is super important in this day and age. And um, this is something that's clearly available in the, the Spotify API version two, um, but isn't available to actual users of the SoundCloud API publicly. Uh, something that we used a lot of that is now available uh, within the SoundCloud API version two um, that we had to previously go through some pretty hacky methods uh, to obtain is uh, the ability to look at the user's network links. Um, so network links are what you see on a SoundCloud user's profile when they um, link their uh, Twitter or uh, Facebook or, or uh, other social profiles. Um, those are clearly available on the profile uh, itself. Um, and previously we had to go through methods that I described in my five tools of the trade video um, where we had to use Selenium or Puppeteer to really get that information. We had to scrape the actual web page in order to get that information out. Um, and it's now available in the SoundCloud API version two um, in, within the API response itself, which is really helpful. Um, but it kind of makes sense to put this uh, as a publicly available endpoint, in my opinion, uh, because this is something that's super useful when we talk about building um, a comprehensive profile of an artist. So let's say we grabbed all of our followers um, and wanted to put that into a CSV. Um, so that's what we kind of did with Fanbase Exporter at Spectral was uh, you could put in any SoundCloud URL and we would give you a CSV full of information about all your followers, all their Facebook links, all their Twitter links, all their Instagram links, um, and this uh, proved really um, popular with a lot of our users. Um, it also helps kind of build that comprehensive profile for uh, your followers too, because once you have those links, uh, you can then go to those profiles via the Facebook API or the Instagram API or other methods that we talked about with uh, Selenium and Puppeteer to see how influential their uh, following is on those other social networks. Um, so just because someone doesn't have a big following on SoundCloud doesn't mean that they don't have a big following anywhere else. Um, so when we really talk about who are the influential people in your network, uh, we can't just look at one network. We have to look at a lot of different networks. And so in order to get that comprehensive look at who your followers really, really are, um, it's important to be able to get an entire social kind of profile of those users. So uh, this would be a really important thing, I think, to put in the public API, but it is available in the SoundCloud API version two. Another feature uh, that's available in the SoundCloud API version two is comment details. Uh, comment details allows you to see um, exactly what point and the comment um, uh, text, I guess you would say, uh, for each comment on a track. Um, I think this is important in a number of ways. Um, it's kind of up uh, to interpretation uh, as to how important you think this is. But to me, it's it can be used in a number of uh, really cool ways. Um, if you look at the timestamp, um, you'd be able to determine exactly what point in a song people really, really were feeling it, right? And I think that's kind of cool to look at as an artist because 
uh, Spotify or, you know, other platforms don't really allow you to comment on songs, especially like at a certain point. Um, so what you're really getting at with SoundCloud and something that they really add value to is uh, being able to see exactly at what point, um, you know, songs are really attracting user attention. Um, I think that can be pretty useful to a user when, uh, or an artist really, uh, when they're making songs, releasing songs, um, they can see exactly what works. Like this kind of feedback from fans, I think is uh, paramount to uh, their growth and development. Um, so I'm not sure why this isn't available. Um, the other aspect to that is uh, the comment text or the comment body. Um, so being able to analyze sentiment um, in what works and what doesn't. Uh, you can also filter out kind of like what are spam comments and what are real comments. Um, I think that's pretty important, uh, especially in this day and age where we have the ability to uh, buy comments basically, um, or, you know, there's a lot of bots out there. So if you really want to analyze how many, um, authentic organic comments are there, you could technically put a filter on this and see exactly how many authentic comments are there versus how many bot comments are there. Um, I think that's pretty cool. Something else I discovered was the ability to see related tracks for any track on SoundCloud. Um, this is important because, um, again, as I mentioned, like Spotify kind of does this already um, in their API. So the ability to see related tracks um, also has a number of uses, right? So being able to see the artists that are kind of around you or related to you based on an algorithm that someone else has developed and is a lot more sophisticated than something you'd probably want to develop allows you not only a networking opportunity, but um, a cross-promotion opportunity. So when you are advertising your artist, um, let's say on Facebook, um, you can target people of a similar uh, demographic by targeting people who like another page. Um, this becomes important with related tracks because uh, this algorithm will determine um, and tell you exactly people that listen to your track also listened and liked uh, or you know follow this other artist track. So it, it kind of gives you that organic look into uh, what people are actually trending toward. Um, this becomes important in advertising uh, because we can target certain other uh, artists around us pages as we advertise uh, our own artist music. So obviously the significance is there, right? We can um, gain some insight through this endpoint uh, as to who we need to market toward and uh, who are our fans are trending toward um, to make better advertising decisions. These next two are just about getting information around the authenticated user. So these um, endpoints and this information aren't available for any user. Um, it's only the user that you are authenticated to the API with. So obviously there's going to be some additional uh, authentication that you're going to need to go through, which we don't go into this video, um, but um, it is, I guess, possible. It's not something I've necessarily explored because I don't really have the need to do it. And it's a pretty new development. Um, but if you guys want me to dive into it, um, just leave a comment below. And um, the first one here is being able to get the message inbox. So this is something that we tried to get a hold of desperately for a number of years and uh, we just we couldn't really hack it the technology wasn't there um, and it it just it wasn't fruitful so we wanted to be able to to send things from our phone right like we wanted a, a message inbox on our phone and for the longest time and i'm not even sure if it's implemented now the soundcloud app didn't allow us to see our inbox respond to messages send messages anything like that um, so the <clears throat> SoundCloud API v2 actually allows us to see the list of uh, inbox messages. I haven't actually tried to send a message to the API, but it at least allows us to list the messages that we've received, which is pretty cool. Um, I think that, uh, you know, has a varied uh, 
potential for application uh, usage, but um, right now, that's all I'm gonna say. The last thing uh, that I'll mention is uh, something that was a little concerning to me. Um, and it's really just for the authenticated user, so there's a little less concern because of that. Um, but the fact is, I just don't see why this was necessary. So there is a certain response from the SoundCloud API that will tell you your plan details. So if you are a free user, a premium user, an unlimited user, um, things like that, um, which is all well and good. And that's something that's done through a number of APIs uh, currently on a lot of big platforms. The part that concerned me the most um, was the fact that you are able to see credit card details through an API response. This part bothers me. This part really, really bothers me because there is absolutely no reason why this information should be passed back from an API. Um, I get if you want to, if the page needs to check what kind of user you are, whether you're a premium user or a free user, I get that why you should see things like the last four digits of your uh, credit card, the last time you were billed, um, none of that seems necessary to display to a front end user. It's absolutely bad practice. Um, I really hope they patch this soon. I, I really hope they had some sort of uh, halfway legitimate business case for this um, but honestly, I mean, this stuff kind of scares me. Um, yes, it's for authenticated users. Yes, you probably couldn't see it unless you were authenticated. Um, but at the same time, we have things like men in the middle attacks, uh, cross-site scripting. I mean, there's no reason why should we should be displaying credit card information in a API response. Like there's nothing on the page that requires that. So very, very confusing SoundCloud. Uh, I hope you guys uh, patch this up as soon as possible. That about does it for Secrets of the SoundCloud API version two. If you want a little bit more in-depth coverage or some code snippets, uh, feel free to visit the Patreon link below. Um, I'm giving out a lot of free game and uh, code snippets for you guys to just like set up and run. Um, I hope you guys enjoy it. Thanks for watching. Uh, subscribe, like, share if you know anyone out there that might enjoy this content. Uh, I'm happy to share the knowledge. Um, leave a comment below if you have any topics that you'd like me to cover. Uh, and we'll see you guys next time. Thanks. Yeah.